Welcome everyone to Let's Play GTA 3. This is a game that, well, basically needs no introduction. Except with me is a person who actually has not played it, so this is going to be pretty interesting. Say hello. Hi, I'm Chaos Arge, and uh, like Doc M says, I have never played GTA 3 in my life. In my defense, this game was came out in 2001, and I was 6 at the time. Yeah, I'm an old, so this was the shit for us, for me and my friends at school and pretty much everyone. Yeah, I like I I know at least of the history around this game and how it basically uh revolutionized like third party third person uh action games, I guess. Yeah. And we just got shot by our girlfriend during a bank robbery. As you do. You know, standard stuff. Liberty City is in shock today as the police and emergency services deal with the aftermath of a devastating attack on a police convoy this morning. As yet, no details have been released about the prisoners being transferred in the convoy, and no group has claimed responsibility. The convoy left police headquarters early this morning for a routine transfer of felons to Liberty Penitentiary. The attack took place on the Callahan Bridge, leaving few witnesses, and the bridge itself severely damaged. Some of the convicts are thought to have perished in the explosion that followed the initial attack. Revelations as to the professionalism of the attack struck police hours afterward, when identification of the missing felons were further hampered by an attack by computer hackers on police headquarters databases. With the Porter Tunnel Project falling behind schedule, this disaster leaves Portland isolated from the rest of the city. Senor Dickhead would be a great username. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's claimed that. I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low, but my hands are all messed up, so you better drive, brother. And with that, we are in control of our protagonist, whose name is not actually mentioned in this game, but Rockstar has said that his name is Claude. Which may or may not be a reference to Claude Speed, who is the protagonist of GTA 2. I'd believe it. I thought... I, I thought his name was CJ, but that might be a different one. No, CJ is in San Andreas. Okay. Yeah, Claude is also a mute protagonist, so he is not going to say a word. That? You know what? I am I think I might be okay with that. Yeah. I've tried playing GTA 5 and I just... I can't really stand the protagonists. Yeah, I kinda agree. So yeah, the first mission here is just this basic stuff we drive to the hideout here to kind of get you... well... This is really the first game of its kind, I would say. This is the place right here. Let's get off the street and find a change of clothes. Yeah, it's good to acclimate your uh, players into a whole new genre. Yeah. I mean, of course, there were the 2D GTA games and some other kind of similar stuff like Driver, but... I know this guy. He's connected. His name's Luigi. Me and him go back. Remember to, uh, make sure there's no incoming traffic before backing out. And also make sure you're pointed the correct way. <laughs> I swear they just give licenses to anyone these days. I mean, they totally do. So we just head on over to the club here around the corner, 
owned by Luigi. This is Luigi's club. Let's go around the back and use the service door. Wait here, man, while I go in and talk to Luigi. Are we not allowed to talk to Luigi? No, no we're not. Naples got some business upstairs. Well, maybe you could do me a favor. One of my girls needs a ride, so grab a car and pick up Misty from the clinic, then bring her back here. Remember, no one messes with my girl. So keep your hands on the wheel. If you don't mess this up, maybe there'll be more work for you. Now get out of here. Well, he seems pleasant. And yeah, Luigi is your basic tutorial mission giver. We just basically play the gopher for him for a few missions here and just get acclimatized with all the mechanics, well, some of the mechanics anyway. Yeah, that's probably all right. So I noticed on one of the earlier loading screens that you were uh, playing the, the Xbox version of this. Yeah, this is the Xbox version. It came out a couple of years after the PS2 version. It's got some enhancements, mainly visual. They didn't like port the entire game over to the Vice City engine or anything like that, which would have been amazing, but it just wasn't in the budget, I guess. Yeah, no, a big conversion like that would be a huge undertaking. Also, what are these cameras? Uh, now, this is the um, original GTA camera. Yeah, this one looks like classic GTA. I don't know if anyone ever played the game like this, but you can. I almost want to see someone like drive around in exclusively in the cinematic camera. Anyway, that was that mission. Not exactly a challenge. But man, that paid pretty decent. Yeah. And yet the game is telling us that we can now roam around the open world, we could steal a taxi to do some of the taxi side missions, which is basically crazy taxi, but a little bit less crazy, I suppose. But we're just gonna continue with Luigi here. The fuck is this title? Luigi said to, to give you this, so here, here, take it. There's a new high on the street. Goes by the name of Spank. Some wise guys been introducing this trash to my girls down Portland Harbor. Go and introduce a bat to his face. Then take his car, respray it. I want compensation for this insult. Yeah, so Spank is this kind of new street drug that is a big plot point in the game. Ah. So the mission title is also a reference to that. As well as Prodigy's hit song, Smack My Bitch Up. From the 90s. I see. At least I would assume that is what it is a reference to. And yeah, we were given a baseball bat, which is the only melee weapon in GTA 3. It's pretty fun to use, it'll knock people down and then you can beat them up while they are down. But of course, there are not all that many enemies that don't use, you know, ranged weapons. So we don't really want to bring a baseball bat to a gunfight. So it's used pretty occasional, I think. Is this the only one you ever get? Does it ever yes, break? Yes, it is. I guess not then. Yeah, in Vice City and San Andreas, they add a whole bunch of melee weapons, but at this point, this is all you get. Hmm. So here I'm just going to plan my approach a little bit. Now the game wants us to use the bat, but I have a better idea. Ah, this strategy. I use this all the time in Sleeping Dogs. 
Yeah, in GTA 3 the combat is not all that smooth to say the goddamn least. <laughs> so if you can get away with ramming your victims with your car, that is probably a good idea. Yep, n nothing uh, tends to get back up after a, a round of car foo. Huh? Cars hurt. A lot. Yeah, they generally do. And yeah, we just now have to get this car sprayed at the local spray shop, which is right around the corner here. Past Luigi's Club. Alright, so that's your introduction to car customization? No, there is no customization. What? We can respray the car with a new color, but that's it. Eh, close enough, I guess. And of course, these spray shops also have the other effect of, well, losing our wanted level. And of course, repairing our cars. Because our cars will get a little bit banged up. Great, thanks. Well, I hope Luigi doesn't mind a slightly bent bumper. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, garages in this game are basically magic anyway. You stash a car in a garage and it'll get automatically repaired. Oh, that's pretty handy. Or at least in your safe house garage. Maybe not this one. So that is another nice and easy tutorial mission to get you started. Hmm. And here I thought I would take the other stallion here, stallion being the name of the Ford Mustang type car in the games, but I figured we'd do something else. Now the emergency vehicles all have their own side missions. The fire truck obviously you will put out fires. The cop cars you stop criminals. And in paramedic you drive around town and pick up patients and take them to the hospital. Again, like crazy taxi. <laughs> And we're not going to be bothering with the fire truck or the vigilante missions, as that's called. But this one we do want to do. That guy is straight up just shitting blood. <laughs> he's fine, he's <laughs> fine. Did, did, did you at least put a towel under his seat? This is perfectly sanitary. Everything is going just as it should be. Oh my. We are professionals. Also, the ambulance in GTA 3 is incredibly top-heavy and it wants to fall over in every corner, basically, so you want to be really careful. And if you have the sirens on, you can kind of get the, the traffic to get out of the way, except sometimes they kind of avoid you in the wrong direction and you end up ramming into them, which isn't great. So I skipped ahead a little bit here. This is level... level 2 or level 3. And this, of course, gets harder the farther you get in the mission. Now, the big problem with the ambulance missions in GTA 3 is the fact that there is no in-game map. There is only the mini-map. So we only have the faintest idea where the patients actually are, and, um... <laughs> <laughs> nothing to see here. So yeah, I went the wrong way and tried to take a shortcut, and yeah, that's what happens. I'm I'm sorry, was the ambulance bleeding? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Because the patient inside was bleeding. And yeah, if your car ends up on its roof or on its side, it explodes, because that is what happens. And that is a pretty accurate representation of your first time doing the paramedic missions in this game, I feel. <laughs> We are not actually be doing those in the main LP. I used another save file that I had from earlier, where I had already completed the mission. Yeah, I am, so I we am, get the rewards from it. I, I imagine those missions are a lot harder when you don't know the the town layout. It is really really hard. But before we get to the other save file, let's just show this off first. The little drug bundle here. This is a hidden package. There are a hundred of them scattered across town, and we'll be getting them all. I, I, I love that the pedestrians don't react to you just bursting through a window. I mean, this is Liberty City. They have seen some shit. You know what? Fair enough. 
So anyway, now we are on the main save file, if you will. We have a lot more money. You have a gun. We also have some... Yeah, we do. Just get this nice car here. I was considering leaving it there and just using another car off the street, but I figured whatever. Anyway, let's just see what we got here. So first off, we have unlocked some weapons here right at the hideout. Every 10 hidden packages you collect, it unlocks a weapon. So that is a very good idea to get all of them. Just take a look at these tutorial messages as well. They're the same ones that we saw during the first mission, but whatever. And by completing the ambulance missions, we also get this health pickup as well as the adrenaline pill. The adrenaline slows down time. Like, it's not bullet time, it slows down everything. Hmm. Which is... It can be situationally useful, I guess, but... Not really something that you need. So, so the progress... The story progress on this save file here isn't actually... It's the same, yeah. I just did the first couple of missions and then went off exploring and... And got a bunch of hidden packages and did the ambulance missions. Ah, okay. How you doing, kid? The Don's son, Joey Leone. He wants some action from his regular girl, Misty. Go pick her up at Hepburn Heights, but watch yourself. That's Diablo Turf. Then run her over to his garage in Trenton and make it quick. Joey ain't the kind you keep waiting. Remember, this is your foot in the door. So keep your eyes on the road and off Misty. Yeah, got it. I mean, how horny does he think we are? Uh, very apparently. I mean, fair enough. So yeah, Misty lives in Hepburn Heights, which is the turf of the Diablos gang. We are actually driving a Diablo gang car right now, and I'm going the wrong way. As I discover at this point. <laughs> and there's lemon to this lamppost, because why not? Lampposts in GTA 3, by the way, are just absolute death. And you do want to avoid them if you're driving fast, because they don't just, you know, disintegrate disintegrate on contact, but no, you just crash and spin out. Which can be a little bit annoying. Those are sturdy. I'm used to lampposts just kind of folding over at the, uh, as soon as you just so much as sneeze on them. Yeah, that does not happen in GTA 3. So anyway, here's Misty again. Now, Misty is one of those characters who are very prominent in the promotional artwork and She's also on the cover of the game, but she's not really a major character. This is actually the last mission that we see her in. <laughs> ah. And the frame rate is having some issues here because the heavy rain isn't helping things. In general, the Xbox version does run a lot better than the PS2 version as well as the PC version at the time, because that was kind of an unoptimized mess. Imagine that, a Rockstar PC port being unoptimized. Shocking. I, I was also just about to ask if uh, the PS2 version performed any better, but I guess it wouldn't have. It has a lot more frame drops. Hmm, but what about the other versions of this game that are out? We'll get to that in a bit. Just say hi to Joey here first. Joey! Am I gonna get to play with your big hands again? I'll be with you in a minute, Spark Plug. Hey, I'm Joey. Luigi said you were reliable, so come back later. There might be some work for you. All right? Yeah we'll, be, yeah, we'll be doing Joey's missions next time. We'll just finish off the Luigi quest chain first. That just makes sense, I think. I'm very concerned about that guy just, uh... phasing in and out of your car there, but... I think that was a lady, but yeah, she was, she's fine. No worries. And we just top up our armor here. The armor is, um... It's a blue pickup with a yellow or greenish shield icon. 
Hmm. Which was later changed into a, well, actual bulletproof vest because it looked too much like the police bribe pickups, which are a blue star. I mean, a yellow star on a blue icon. So they look pretty similar. Yeah, I could see why they'd want to change that. Some Diablo scumbag has been pimping his scuzzy bitches in my backyard. Go and take care of things for me. If you need a piece, go around back of Amnonation opposite the subway. That easy to get a gun, huh? Yeah, this is where you're supposed to get a gun. Not ammunition, of course, we'll be able to buy various weapons, but we don't gonna, we don't have to do that all that often because we are collecting the hidden packages. So we are going to amass a pretty decent arsenal hmm. without ever paying for any of it. That's handy. Yeah, and what I actually neglected to mention about the paramedic missions is that when you finish level 12, which is the final one, you unlock infinite sprint, which is incredibly useful, as you might expect. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how much... That didn't take long. Nothing to see here. Well, we did actually briefly get a wanted level there, but once you complete a mission, your wanted level automatically goes away, so... So that's kind of handy. I was gonna say, like... That ramming two dudes right in front of a cop doesn't seem like the smartest idea, but... Well, I mean, they were gang members, so who cares? I suppose? Honestly, though, the cops usually do care no matter who you shoot, but... And they tend to get in your way when you least least want them to. It's almost like they're trying to prevent crime. How dare they? The jerks. <laughs> the policeman's ball is being held at the old school hall near the Callahan Bridge, and they'll be looking for some old school action. Now I got girls all over town walking the street. Get them to the ball. They'll make a bundle. Get as many of them as you can before the cops drink away their green. Well, speaking of cops, we need to provide some entertainment to their ball. So that is what we'll be doing, and we're gonna need a four-door vehicle for this, obviously. Perfect. Uh, this is not exactly the best vehicle for this, but it's it's gonna do us fine, I think. It's got plenty of space. We could use a little bit more speed, but that's okay. I'm a marketing manager who lives in the suburbs and commutes to work on the highway. I live alone, so of course I needed a car that had C12 and is equipped to drive across... Yeah, this is not a particularly exciting mission, but it does give us a nice tour of the city, or at least this part of the city. So the counter that says girls there, that's how many girls you've delivered, right? Uh, yeah, that is how many we deliver. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was number delivered or number riding with you. Yeah, one of them is hanging out here in the junkyard, which I'm not so sure about, but whatever floats your boat, I guess. I I see they're not wearing shirts. They're ready for a... They're ready to party. Yeah. So this here is St. Mark's, which is the Mafia district. We got a bunch of Italian restaurants and all that stuff. You know how it goes. We got all the stereotypes. Right, right. Okay, and our car is now full, so let's go ahead and deliver them. I feel like you should be able to get at least, like, two more people in there, but... Yeah, you should, but I guess it's just a programming limitation that you can only have, like, a four-door vehicle at max. Yeah, I would. It would not surprise me that this game uh, has a lot of stuff going on under the hood. And yet, to complete the mission, we need to deliver four girls, and we have already delivered three. So, failing this is 
pretty hard unless you have like a two-door car. Or you really don't know how the layout of the city, city is, but... But yeah, not that easy to fail this one. Do you get a bonus for delivering more, or...? Yeah, you do. You get some cash. Oh, okay. Obviously, we do want to get the ones that are farthest away at this point, and leave the closest ones for later. So, I think we got another one here in St. Mark's as well. Yep, we're coming up on her. Hello, officer. Nothing illegal is happening here. Just, uh, delivering the entertainment to the policeman's ball. Yep. Now, Chinatown, of course, is controlled by the triads. Naturally. They are the guys in the blue overalls. We can see one of them walking around there. Oh, okay. And they are not hostile to us at this point. Is there a point in like the, the story where they be, just become hostile, or do you have... Yeah, there are certain missions that will turn these various gangs hostile to you. Okay. Okay, and that'll be six, and now we just need to get these two that are pretty close by. Now getting all eight might be a little bit challenging, especially when you are in a slow piece of crap car like this one, but... But you should just about be able to do it. Maybe not on your first playthrough, but... If you know the district, you should be fine. Yeah, it, it doesn't look crazy. But, yeah, knowing the, the lay of the land will help a lot with this. Yeah. GTA 3 has three districts. The industrial district that we are in here, which is called Portland. And then there is the commercial district, which is Staunton Island. And the suburban or residential area, which is named Shoreside Vale. Okay. And we will unlock those as the game goes on. Yeah, I know the first two areas pretty well. Not so much the third one, because I haven't really gotten there on that many playthroughs, you know? Right, right. Now, before this, it had been like 15 years since I had actually gotten to that part of the game, so... <laughs> so, once we get to that part, yeah, there will be some, some slight issues, but nothing too bad. Mm. Anyway, we are now done with Luigi's missions, and next time we'll be starting off with Joey's mission chain. Sounds like a plan.